What exactly do you do for a living, Mr. Little? I rip and run. You? I rob drug dealers. And exactly how long has this been your occupation, Mr. Little? Well, I don't know exactly. The most satisfying moments on The Wire. I ain't involved in that gangster bullshit no more. Now this was definitely a tricky video to navigate through. I'm not glorifying death or advocating for someone to get hurt. Man, y'all some cold ass motherfuckers, man. But Wire fans, there's no way around it. It is what it is. Cause some of the most satisfying and vindicating moments came at the darkest time. Smart n You always were. No lie, I can watch moments like this all day. You get the money cracking cribs or what? These are the moments these characters got their just due. They got what they deserve. How my hair look, man? If you think there's a moment I'm missing or you would have done the list a different way, get in the comment section. I look forward to chopping it up with you. But first, like always, Big Rich, tons more wider content on the way. Chop Shop family, we're this close to 30,000 subscribers. So if you're new to the channel, help your boy out and hit that little red button. Thank y'all so much for giving me a chance. I rock with each and every one of y'all. Now let's get into it, y'all. The most vindicating and satisfying moments on The Wire. Let's go. Let's get some of the light, non-violent scenes out the way. And there's no way I can talk about satisfying moments without highlighting Avon crashing Sergey and Marlowe's meeting. <laughs> Now this scene was satisfying for many different reasons. Number one, look how uncomfortable Marlo is. This joint right here threw this man off his square. Look at his face. Look at that dopey ass grin on his face. <laughs> no one, I mean no one, was able to get over on Marlo. And the fact that it's Avon. Surprise. <laughs> And he did this from prison? Just shows the power this man still possesses. My man Sergey thought we should talk first. Talk about what? That's on you, young. Now I think this scene was tremendous for the story and the plot. But let's talk about Avon for a second. Cause up in this bitch here, I'm 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 what you might consider an authority figure. I think this scene situated this brother for when he got out of jail. Plus, I think Avon put the chip in Marlo's head to kill Proposition Joe. And all the fuss about you coming at me, I say let bygones be bygones, but fuck all them east side bitches. And secondly, when Avon gets out, he can just go above Marlo's head and chop it up with Sergey. Sergey stepped to me the other day saying, nigga Marlo, who you don't even know, just be sending him cash money to get on his visiting list. If him and Sergey are buddy buddies for the next seven years, just imagine the position it'll put Avon in when he gets out. Over West Side, everybody know everybody, right? <laughs> Not to mention this scene was funny as shit. That let me help you find your tongue line still makes me laugh whenever I watch this shit. Let me help you find your tongue. You trying to get to the Russian so you can get a line to his people. You trying to get to the Greek motherfuckers because if you can, you want to cut Proposition Joe and all them other east side bitches out to connect. But anyway, y'all, I might be reaching on this one. Get in the comment section. Let me know your thoughts. Since we're already talking about Avon Barksdale, there's one other scene I can think about that's just as vindicating and satisfying as this one. And that's Avon and Stringer's last bit of dialogue to each other. Avon had this quote when talking to Stringer Bell that it's just business. It's just business. Now, us as Wire fans, we knew what was coming. <laughs> Not to mention, we just saw Stringer Bell snitch on this man. He gave Avon up to Bunny Colvin. Which makes this scene double satisfying. Being that Avon's last words to this man was, it's just business. Oh my God, that put the exclamation point on this scene. This business. All right, y'all, that's enough of Avon for now. Get in the comment section. Let me know which scene you prefer between the two. 
Moving on, we got Bodie pulling a fast one on the cops. Bodie outsmarts him with one word, contrapment. <laughs> This, this must be one of them contrapment things. This one was enjoyable too, but for a different reason. You mean entrapment? Kids got a point. Needless to say, Bodie and the Baltimore Police Department have had a very eventful relationship between the two. I want for you to suck my d All the back and forth, and for Bodie to finally be right for a change. Kids got a point. Like McNulty said, he's still dining out on this line. Mr. Entrapment, how are you doing? Don't look like that. I'm still dining out on that story. Did this man really call him kiddo? Smart kiddo. I loved it. Oh, that's the corniest line in the whole shit. Kiddo. Smart kiddo. Nah, but real shit, Bodie got nine lives when it comes to the police. I got another quick one I want to get out the way before we get to the heart of this video. You know, watching Herc beg Marlo back for his camera was funny, entertaining, and of course, satisfying. I believe you got my camera or what? This was one of the rare times of the show that I was rooting for Marlo, because at this moment, I couldn't stand Herc anymore. License registration. You do me one, I'll do you. You got a card or something? I said this in another video, Herc is the Ziggy Sabaka of police work. I already put it down to the CI. I tell dickhead the truth. He takes my stripes on it. And being that he's literally on his hands and knees begging Marlo for his camera back. Video camera gotta come back. Yeah, well, I'll see what I can find out about it. Talk about justice is served. Plus, this scene was impactful for a couple reasons. One, it cost Herc the job. And secondly, and more importantly, it did exactly what Prop Joe told Marlo it would do. It would flush out whichever agency is chasing him. Sergeant Thomas Hawk. Baltimore City Police. Didn't I say city would come running? Did. Yeah. FBI, DEA? No. Local police. This man talking about it cost him the job. Like Marlo gives up. Hey, you ever find that camera? Cost me the job. <laughs> <laughs> now that I'm down to my last three scenes, I figured I'd put these bad boys in order. How my head look, Mike? Number three. We say bye bye to Snoop. How my hair look, Mike? How my hair look, Mike? That sound, those words, that shit is like music in my ears. You look good, girl. She was Zombie Master's right hand man. One of the most lethal assassins on this show. He was never one of us. You never could be. And if there's one thing about Snoop, that I really admired. She absolutely loved her job. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna go with this right here, man. How much I owe you? I say that to say this. As much of a savage as she was, there was something very important that she lacked, and that's common sense. You tell this kid to leave his piece home? Did you forget that you trained him? How do you know? Y'all taught me. Y'all taught me. Y'all taught me. Get there early. Look, this is the weakest body in the entire series. I mean, you could have still had to jump on this boy even if he brought his piece. You gave yourself away, girl. We loved her character, but she got what was absolutely coming to her. How my head look, Mike? I robs drug dealers. Number two, Omar puts Levy in his place. I love the level of cockiness and arrogance that Omar had when he took the stand. You. I robs drug dealers. For Omar to say what he said in this moment, in front of the judge, in front of the whole city of Baltimore, calling Levy out, I can't tell y'all the joy this scene brought me as a child. Just like you, the man. culture of drugs. Excuse me? What? I got the shotgun. Got the briefcase. It's on the game though, right? Don't get a twist, I love Levy's character. This man was just as much of a gangster as Snoop was. This scene is so satisfying to watch, it never gets old. And look, I ain't never put my gun on no citizen. You are a moral, are you not? Looking to the judge for help, 
Come on, bro. It's the only time your ass was speechless. This scene was really close to being number one on my list. Wire fans, y'all already know what it is. I can go with that, no thanks. We get Cheese's ass up out of here. You don't think Cheese know this here game? The satisfaction, the joy, finally some justice for Joe. That was for Joe. And this scene is iconic for so many different reasons. First off, Cheese's speech before he gets body is one of the best speeches on this show. Cause Joe had his time and Omar put an end to that. Then Marlo had his time, short as it was. And the police put an end to that. And now it's our time. There's no nostalgia to this Come on. Jeez. There ain't no back in the day. Ain't no nostalgia to this shit here. And then right as Cheese reaches the climax of his speech, bang! But now, nigga, nigga. Come on, y'all. I need y'all to do me a favor. The first time y'all saw this Cheese Slim Charles scene, get in the comment section. Let me know your initial thoughts. I was like, touchdown, finally. I thought Cheese was gonna make it. I said this in the previous video. There was like eight minutes left in the entire series. What the f you do that for? Now we short the nine. That was for Joe. Oh man, what a great scene, y'all. Anyway, y'all, I hope y'all enjoyed the list. These are my most satisfying moments on The Wire. Still bring me joy and happiness to this day, 20 something years later. Like always, if you're still here and haven't subscribed yet, do your boy a solid and hit that red button. And then check out some of the other work. It really helps the channel out. Chop Shop family, I'll see y'all next time. Thanks so much for watching.